Hi everyone, it's uh, Mark again from simplifyinglife.com.au. I don't know if you know a lady called uh, Byron Katie, B Y R O M K A T I E, Byron Katie. Uh, I think I spelled it correct. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I spelled it correct. Um, she has come up with something called the work where she uh, helps people by asking questions and guiding them through the process to find out whether their thoughts are actually correct or not or whether they can see a situation differently. Now, why am I talking about this? Not necessarily to promote Byron Katie's work, even though it's really good. The point of the, the matter is that I often get clients in my practice who will tell me things that they think have happened. So when we talk about past stuff, they tell me it's like, well, this, this, and this has happened, and everyone this, and it's always wrong, and it's not going well. And they'll do the same thing for the future, you know, for today forward. So from today forward. So if they say something like, well, you know, if this doesn't change, then that and that will happen, or, you know, it will all work out wrong, or, yeah, my life is going down the drain, or I'll never be happy anymore, or this can't be fixed, or uh, I'll never feel good again, or my husband slash wife doesn't understand me and never will, uh, statements like that. Now, those statements are obviously serious statements, and I, I take them seriously. But the fact of the matter is that we often don't know what's going to happen. Well, actually, I, I nine out of ten times don't know what's going to happen in the future. I can only make estimated, you know, educated guesses. The problem that plays, though, is that your brain doesn't give a rip about whether things are true or not. It just believes you at face value, you know, believes you on your word. So if you think that something is going to go wrong or if you fear that a certain circumstance is going to hurt you or your loved ones in a, in a bad way, then your brain immediately believes that to be true because whether you think about something tomorrow, next week, next year, you are thinking about it right now and right now is when your brain responds to it. Uh, I had a conversation with a lady yesterday who, who was fearing for the health of her son, you know, all sorts of reasons and kept her up at night. Uh, now, the son had actually told her that he was doing okay, but she didn't really believe him because of all sorts of circumstances. So she would be lying awake at night fearing for her son's health and, and for his future, whereas the son said he was okay and there was nothing wrong. Now, who's right? Well, it doesn't really matter who's right because that's, that's one of those questions like, well, we can find that out later. But right there and then, both are right in a sense. You know, the son is right because he feels okay and there's nothing wrong. Now, the mum is right as well because she feels worried about him and thinks that something is going to happen and therefore she's right as well. Now, both will have side effects or effects from that or consequences or experience consequences from that. You know, the son feels good, so he's all right. Now, the mum feels bad, so now she has all sorts of uh, negative stress hormones, cortisol and adrenaline, more adrenaline running through her system that keep her up at night and, and don't allow her to sleep. Point being in this little video and of my, or the point I'm trying to make here, is that your brain will believe you right here, right now. It doesn't matter where something takes place tomorrow or not, or next week, or next year, or 20 years from now. It believes you right here, right now, and actually acts upon whatever you are thinking right here, right now. So if you are afraid or feeling afraid of something that will perhaps potentially happen two years from now, you will feel afraid now and your body will respond to that one you know, immediately by releasing stress hormones into your system that keep you awake, make you feel horrible, etc., etc. So what to do? Well, you know, first of all, can you first of all acknowledge that we don't exactly know what is going to happen? We can make a really good estimated, really good educated guess about what might happen there's a good old chance that I'll be alive tomorrow, but I'm not 100% sure because I just don't know what's going to happen during the day. I'll be fairly certain that my partner and I will be together in five years' time because of how we are doing today, but I'm not 100% sure because I just don't know. It depends on our, both our levels of commitment and on life events happening. But because I am sure about it now, I feel good about our relationship now and about our relationship five years from now. I feel good about that. But if you don't feel good now, like this lady didn't feel good about her son's health, even though he had told her that he was doing all right, 
she experiences the stress and worry symptoms physically, mentally, and emotionally from that. Now, that's the way it is. But one way, again, a 1% step to start undermining that is ask yourself the question, like Byron Katie does in her work, is this true? Now, is what you are thinking actually true? Is it true? Now, are you right? And even if you can answer that question with, yes, I think this is true, you know, even if you are completely convinced that what you, what you think and, and what is happening, even though someone else might tell you differently, even though you, that happens, you still think you're right. Then the second question would be, can you know absolutely 100% for sure that what you are thinking is true? Most people, most people I talk to in my counseling practice will always answer that question well with, uh, with, with something like, well, not really. You know, I can't be 100% sure. And if they say, oh, yeah, absolutely 100% sure, I say, look, but you know, use the example of the, the lady and her son. It's like, but your son told you that he is okay. So can you be 100% sure that he's not? And she told me, like, well, no, I can't, you know, unless he has a medical diagnosis or another way of telling that he's not okay point of this one is that generally we assign so much value i would say too much value to what we are thinking to the point that we start considering what we are thinking as true or as the truth whereas it's merely thoughts with all the respect for all your thinking you know i'd like to challenge you there a little bit we are merely thinking that what we are thinking is true and therefore have the reactions as if what we are thinking is true and therefore feel good, bad, whatever it is that we're feeling. But perhaps it's not true at all. And so my tip for today or my challenge to you is start putting your thoughts under the microscope. The way I challenge my clients in sometimes a bit of a funny um, tongue poking way is to say, look, you know, you seem to be able to predict the future really well. Yeah, are you able to predict my future too? Because I'd like to know if I can actually win the lotto next week or whether I can win that prize home you know, next month that we've actually you know, bought lottery tickets for. And they look at me as like, no, I can't tell you that. I say, well, how come that you are so good at predicting your own life but not really able to predict my life? You seem really good at this predicting stuff. And then we generally have a giggle because that's the whole point of it. But there's truth behind it. We think we know, but we don't we generally don't know what's happened because life can change in an instant for the better and for the worse, but it doesn't stay the same. It just appears to be staying the same. And sometimes it does. Most likely it does, but you just don't know for 100% sure of what you're thinking is right. So as a tip from Mark for today, start putting your thoughts under the microscope, really ask yourself and maybe use Byron Katie stuff because it's good boring me, but ask yourself the question is what I'm thinking true. Yeah, and if it is, can I 100% absolutely no doubt whatsoever you know, know that it is true? Or can I still put a dent in, in my own thinking? And Byron Katie asks another couple of questions to get, get clients to restructure their thinking differently. But I would even just start off with those two, those two questions because they can already help you put a different slant on what you're thinking and, and help you forward in that sense. So if you're up for the challenge, hey, look, email me. Uh, Mark, M-A-R-C, at simplifyinglife.com.au. Uh, find me on Facebook, find me on LinkedIn, wherever you'll find me. And let's start that discussion about how our thinking appears to be true, but generally isn't true right here and right now. But if it makes you feel really bad right here, right now, it's true for you. And we might have to look at that in order to change it for the better so you can sleep well again, et cetera, et cetera. So up for the challenge, let me know. Uh, look forward to your feedback. Uh, always open feedback, obviously, and uh, yeah, look forward to connecting again next time. Have a good one.